Good evening, good evening. Hopefully we are doing well. Let me just check, uh, check the studio settings to make sure everything's streaming the way it should be. And it does look like we are good to go with sound. I'm literally going to address from start to finish the exact topic in the title in just a few minutes here. I get a ton of comments on sales. Sales are always the driving factor on complaints on issues and things like that. Now, I've been testing geez, since October 12th of last year. Um, hang on just a second. Let me close something off. So I've paid a lot of attention to uh, results. What works? What doesn't work? We've done tests, 4,000 listings versus 4,000 like-to-like listings to see what one option does versus another option. I don't just turn on an option and then I get sales, so that means that option works. There's no way to judge if something works on eBay or any platform without having a baseline. A bunch of listings that you can compare like to like to show that the listings that you didn't do anything to did this, and the ones you did something to did this, something different. Now, I've tested it, geez, I don't know how many times. We've lost sales. I gave up some sales even to test this and stuff. The same results happen every single time I do it. And not just me, I, I'm almost sure there's at least a couple of folks who I've talked to directly in the feed, probably now, maybe not commenting, but people I've directly talked to for at least a year or longer. I don't call out names very often, especially when I haven't asked to do it. So I'm not going to call out any names, but those, especially in Patreon, know. I mean, I talk to some folks three times a week and we interchange paragraphs, I mean, pages worth of results with each other and comments on what seems to work, what doesn't seem to work. The same thing works every time I do it. Every single time I do it, it works. And that is with the end in cell similar. I'll talk about specifics on that in a minute. I have to do that. And I also have to do sales and markdown in uh, connection with each other. So I'll do uh, the end and sell similar. And as soon as I'm done with whatever I'm going to do, the amounts I'm going to do for that day, I immediately restart a sale for two days. I run a two-day sale the minute another one ends. All the time, 24-7, all the time. Now, I'm going to suggest one other option here. I don't do promoted listings, but if you are in a category that there's multiples of the same item up as you are selling. Let's say you got a pair of Nike shoes and 100, 150 other people are selling the exact same pair. Whatever it is, something new, something that a lot of people would have, something sold across the country, you're going to have to promote. I don't see any other way around it. From the results that I have, as well as everybody I've talked to directly, personally, that I talk to on a first name basis, which are quite a few these days, they came to the same conclusion without me telling them what my conclusion was. Everybody says the same thing. If you are not willing to put in some action on your account, refresh your listings, and refresh I mean end and sell similar, or if you're one of the other group that wants to do end and relist, whatever. The end and sell similar I think is the best option because it gets rid of any metadata that's going to float over when you relist an item because a relisted item on eBay carries some dead weight. If you look at the code for the uh, on your web browser, you can look at the code. Uh, what's it? Uh, F11, I think, will show the code for the page. Um, and you can see that there's stuff carried over when you do uh, relist versus a sell similar. So that's why I always recommend the sell similar. Whatever floats your boat. But if you're not doing some action, whether it's promoted, whether you're running sales all the time, or refreshing your listings, your sales will drop. Every single time I don't do those options, my sales drop. Every single time. I'm not just spewing out some words. This is me testing this for, we're almost on a year of me testing this. Every single month I'm doing this. Every single week, every couple days, we are doing action on our account related to those steps I just told you, the end and sell similar and running sales. When I don't do it, my sales can drop. And they can drop 30 to 40% when I let them go and don't touch them for a few days. If you let your items sit for more than 30 days, I can tell you, you're running the risk of them not being displayed to potential buyers. eBay doesn't have to display them. It's in the user agreement. Read it yourself if you don't buy that, that explanation. They don't have to. They don't have to show your items. To get the most views, to get the most sales, to keep sales, like right now, our sales are just a little bit below fourth quarter numbers. 
and I'm still, it's been running this way when I do what I said I was doing, when I do the end and sell similar, and when I do sales and markdown. Again, I, I'm not just blowing wind. This is me. I, I've got tens of thousands of listings that we have tested these with. Let me just make sure. Let me just make sure everything does. Okay. So I'm not just spewing it with a few listings or whatever. I'm not, you know, not testing this. We're doing, uh, you can do 10,000 listings as a sales and markdown at a time so i break them down into lots of ten thousand usually when i'm doing a sales and markdown and we specifically target certain things and then i'll i'll keep some that i don't do that to and again we're comparing like to like we've got a baseline to say hey if i don't do anything this is what always happens but if i do something this is what always happens you can't just turn on promoted listings and get some sales and say promoted listings got me those sales because you have no way to say that even if you didn't turn it on you might have got those sales there's no rhyme or reason to some extent why sales come in and why they don't. You have to have the right person on. And there isn't some filter that gives you the right person every 10 minutes you know, on the clock. It, it's not going to happen. So there's no guarantee on stuff like that. It's just the way it is. Now, I've had people tell me, and again, no disrespect to anybody, I haven't seen the, the data or evidence to prove or not prove either way on any of this. I, I've told that you know eBay doesn't show it, or eBay only shows smaller sellers, or eBay only shows bigger sellers. I personally, I, I've got an IT degree, and I'm not just not trying to rub anything in, but I've looked at this. I have a degree in database design and construction as well as networking. So I've got the certs, you know, Net Plus and Safety Plus and A Plus, and I've got a, a Microsoft networking cert as well. I, I know how this stuff works. We had to make a database from scratch, just from a textual database in SQL, if you know what that is. And then we've done some other stuff. So I, I, I know how it works. I understand the whole process. I've set up some of my own databases with massive amounts uh, of you know, uh, pages of paperwork where we, we embedded it or injected it into the, into the database. Maybe eBay doesn't know the effects that this is having. I know that may sound screwy, but there's two options. Either eBay doesn't know what the results are, or they do, and that's the intention of the results. I'm more leaning towards eBay doesn't know what they're doing in this aspect. They may not get that they're losing all these people. I know they see the numbers. I know they see the numbers, but I'm not going to say eBay is intentionally targeting me or anybody else because I haven't seen any proof. And anybody who's watched me knows I don't stick up for eBay when I've got proof that says otherwise. If they're doing something wrong, everybody should know about it, in my opinion. If you're going to sell on the platform, you need to know who you're dealing with. And I, I can't say eBay. I, I don't believe eBay is targeting big or smaller sellers. If you get the action on the account and you're willing to spend, I spend you know hours a week dealing with my account even with them without listings. So I'll change prices. I'll fix a few listings a day here. I'll add some item specifics recommended. Um, and then we'll do the end and sell similar. I'll run the sales. So there's always something going on. I answer my emails immediately to get more action on them. So I don't let them wait. I don't let them build up. I do them throughout the day. Everything we do, like send offers to watchers, is throughout the day. It's not a one-time thing. I'll look at my page. All of that action is time-consuming. It, it's going to take some dedication for you to want to dig into it. So if you're not investing the time and if you're not outsourcing and you don't have to list anything or you don't have anything to list, be picking at your own listings. One single change and one single uh, title, uh, uh, one new keyword can get that item sold. I, I can give you probably a hundred examples of when I've changed or, hey, why don't you put that in your title? I've told somebody else and the item sold fairly quickly. So... I, I miss up stuff like that. I don't know all the keywords for every item you know that's out there. So those are all options. But if you don't do one of those things, the promoted listings, the end and sell similar, end and relist, and sales or coupons as well, or all of those, you're not going to get as much sales, no matter what. I don't see any way around it. The only the, the 3% of people who get sales constantly and don't have to do anything have the hottest items on the market right now. Probably 1% of what I personally find are hot movers. 1%. And probably most people that I talk to and deal and interact with and talk to on a first name basis I have the same thing. It's the same basic thing. You're not going to get all the highest, best, quick selling items no matter what. If you sell in collectibles, you're going to have even a less chance to get the highest, most hottest selling items out there because they're, they're, they change so often. Most collectibles, there's only a couple of them on eBay at any given time. So you don't have the competition, but you still have to have someone interested in buying it. Hot items, a different story. 
if they're, again, a pack to Nike shoes, whatever type of tennis shoes you have, or whatever thing you're selling, a video game. There may be 150 people selling the very same video game as you, and uh, a discount, you, you probably wouldn't want to do a markdown because there's a set number. Everybody knows what a certain video game sells for. Luigi's Mansion. It's like 50 bucks every time I've seen it sold, or in that range, depending on conditional. But 50 bucks is, is, well, used to be last year an average price for Luigi's GameCube game. I can't price it at 75 and expect to sell it, even if I do a discount, because I don't do a discount enough to bring it down. You, you can't go too far over or too far under on a game like that. You can give it away and lose some money, of course. The best option is to do a promoted listing probably on something like that, or a clothing piece, or a designer handbag or something like that. I've done promoted in the past. I've done them on, on Amazon and stuff like that. So I'm not, I'm not adverse to doing them, but for, for my store and what I do and the results we've always tested, it's not worth it at all for me. It's just basically free money because the items would have sold whether I put them on promoted listings or not because it just takes the right person to find your items. If the right person isn't in there, they're not going to see it. It's not going to matter. It doesn't matter if you promote it or not. And when they do pop in, if you're promoting it, you're just going to pay the promoted fee. They would have seen it anyway. But again, if you're selling something that 150 people or even 100 people have active on eBay right now, that's not going to work. You have to do promoted listings at a certain percentage. If you're not doing something on your account, some action, some, some routine thing to keep your items fresh, they're, they're not going to sell as much. You're going to see your sales numbers go down. And I'm not spewing you know, fake percentages. Again, I don't want to give out a name. I almost gave out a name. But uh, there's folks that I talk to that are in the same 30 to 40% threshold if they don't do anything, any of these actions on their account. But there's not a single item out of the 30,000 items plus that I have in the store I share with everybody that's older in my store than uh, what was the last day. August 14th, nothing is older than August 14th in my store right this second. On Friday or Saturday, it's going to be moved up another 10 days almost on that. So we'll have items. Everything in our store will basically be about 15 or 16 days old. Every single thing in our store. Again, that takes time to do 30,000 listings. You can only do 200 at a time. So we split them up. But we're rushing and, and doing more relists where the same item may be relisted or sold similar in our store twice a month now. So every item in the store may be flipped over twice every single month, every 14 days. I'll split it up in groups. I'm not going to obviously do all those at once. I'd be here for two hours, you know, I'll, maybe or maybe even a little longer to do 30,000 listings. But it, it works. It shows results. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to spew anything. It shows them every single time. There, there's, I've never had a test that, that had results that were the same every time. They were always saying, if you do this, you're going to get something out of it. Every time. Again, it may be what I sell. It may be what the folks that I talk to sell because they sell semi-similar items. They're vintage mostly and collectibles. Some sell sports, but they're having the same results. The same results. Again, it's that action on the account. And let's say you're promoted listings, but you're not refreshing the listings. Even those promoted listings could get pushed down because the items are stagnant on the site. eBay can put those promoted listings anywhere they want. It's literally what it says again in the user grant. I'm fine with that. I don't use them anyway, but the, the point is you have to realize that aspect. So even if you're promoting, chances are you need to end and sell similar too to make your items be fresh to the site. Or end and uh, end and re whatever you want to do. Uh, again, I don't recommend end and relist. It's technically not the same thing, and the metadata proves that. But point being, though, you've got to do something. You, there, the days of sitting there, which is what we used to do, and just let the item sit and selling is is done. eBay has put an end to that, and they started to do that at the beginning of last year. And in my category is October twelfth. I think is the date if everybody remembers when all the sales took a dive for three or four weeks. Again, we tested everything to get it moving again, and as long as we keep up with everything we've tested, it keeps going. We could rock again. I'm not not putting as much of effort with listing as much as we got a lot of stuff going on. My kids are, are are one of my sons got an engineering job, and the other one's got a real good job too. But so I don't have as many employees, so I don't have as much going into. But our sales are right up there, even with less items going up right this very second. 
So again, if I had the, the newer listed items, I'd probably be over what my fourth quarter was last year. And my fourth quarter last year was the highest I've ever been. I would be over that if we were listing more a uh, considerably amount more items. Now we've listed a couple hundred today and a couple hundred yesterday, but that's par from what we normally do. So if you sell 150 items a week or 50 items a day, you've got to list 51 just to keep yourself growing. So, you know, you got to keep those count numbers up so your your overall inventory totals can go down if you don't list enough. So keep that in mind. So we're above, we're still adding to the, the amount of listings, but anyway, not as much as we normally do. Um, let's hop over to, to some questions and see if anybody's in the house who we got here today. Hey, Mike, how you doing, Artie? Mike, good to see you in house. Are you bizarre? Now, there's two ways to take that name. Bizarre as in weird or bizarre uh, as in the, the function, the Christmas bizarre or something. Um, reselling Boomer, how are you doing? From a wet Australia town, spell check next time. Okay. Antiquarian Bookman, how are you doing? Yeah, it's it's it was cloudy today, breezy, and probably about 76, so it was a real nice day outside. Of course, I wasn't outside much. I had to do a long drive. Well, not a real long drive, but I was on the road again today for a little while with my oldest. Um, disgruntled Octopus, how are you doing? Uh, let's pop down here. Yeah, I did hear Queen Elizabeth II did pass away. I kind of figured it wasn't going good when they uh, said the family was called to be there. Once you hear that, that's pretty much. And she was, what, 90-something, 90 94, 96. Um, Soul Steps, yep. Mr. Mugen Wee, how you doing? Hey, Aaron. Hope you're doing well, Aaron. Hope things on your end are going well. I don't know how everybody else is, but this has been a great time to be buying. I don't need to buy, but this is a great time to do pickups and sourcing. The cheapest time merchandise, it, it, the cheapest time of the year is summer. There's more merchandise around and available, and there's not as many people fighting because it's spread out farther. So if you're buying merchandise or you need to buy merchandise, you should have been doing it through the entire summer. This is about Towards the end of this month will be the last you'll really see. After this, it gets colder around here, and you won't see as many anything. So it'll be moving to inside auctions and stuff like that within the next probably 50 days or so around here. Again, fourth quarter is almost upon us, so you need to start getting up and building your quantity. Rule of thumb with fourth, fourth quarter, if you haven't been through a fourth quarter, is get everything up you have. The more you have up, the better you're going to do every single time, no matter what time of year, but fourth quarter there's usually an influx in what's going on we'll probably hit on amazon's new you can use amazon uh, even if you don't list on amazon now if you didn't know that and shopify are still having some issues in the stocks but that's doesn't that's here nor there about using shopify just fyi Hey, Mr. Hale, Bob Hale in the house. How you doing, Bob? Hopefully you're doing well. I do have a video, and if I had another five minutes, I would have had it up ready. It's already uploaded, so two minutes after the show's done, I'll have another Patreon video. Yesterday, I did put another uh, YouTube membership video up, uh, and it's in a series as well. Uh, for those in Patreon, it's still everything's the same. There's no lesser videos or nothing else. Again, if you're in Patreon, don't you no need to go to YouTube membership. YouTube membership is there for those who don't want to leave YouTube and are worried about you know off platform and Patreon. So you've got basically access to the same, most of the same content. Not all of it, of course, but anyway. So if you want to have some more content, I do have a join button down there that will lead you to my membership. I only have one level. It's nine ninety nine and it's video quantity. Uh, for those in Patreon, my membership there, there's like 500 and I think 26 videos up there, all in depth. They're all probably two or three times longer than most of my videos you have here other than my live show. Um, and I do do live shows on Patreon. Those are usually an hour and a half to two hours when I do them. I don't do them all the time, but I'm probably going to do another one in the next two weeks on there. So. I constantly get questions on that. Those are the two options. It's the only paid service I have. I don't have courses. I don't do anything like that. I am still working on a a uh, guide, a purchase uh, picker's guide is basically what it's going to be. Um, I will be posting some a couple of pages, completed, approved, proofread pages in Patreon shortly. And they're going to show... Um, some some of what's the book's going to be so just fyi do i'm getting really close we will probably have a real full-fledged publisher and hopefully national 
uh, publication, but still not 100% sure. But anyway, just FYI, that's what's going on there. I do have videos ready for tomorrow for here on YouTube. Our week's been really hectic, and I've been trying to get ahead, so I'm not backed up or behind. For those in Patreon as well, I have answered everything as of last night, and I went back in just before the show, and I've hit up every email, all the comments. Uh, I have three more single posts, uh, and I think Susan's one of them, on um, the community tab, which I will hit right after the show. I know I saw a mirror and a few other things up there, which we will get to tonight still. If there's any other emails after um, that were posted after the show, I probably won't get to those till tomorrow. I do have to get up really early tomorrow. I don't really like getting up at 3 in the morning, but that's that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, just to get somewhere ahead of time and hopefully get in and out before there's any traffic. Uh, I got stuck in traffic the other day on the way to Detroit, and ugh, it was awful. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been in traffic. Uh, see the lights, how are you doing? Good play on words there, I see as well. Uh, if you have anything royal listed now, Mr. Mug and Wee. Um, yeah, to a certain extent, I would give it a week. Only just out of respect would be just my personal uh, feelings. Um, for those in Patreon and, and if you're in my, my YouTube membership, I'm going to show you something tied to a movie star that you better be buying right now. Um, those in Patreon, you've already seen the exact person I'm talking about, a comedian. If you're looking at the news, there's a new movie coming out from that same comedian that will probably be pushed everywhere. So anything with him in it is going to be worth some money. So that'll be uh, uh, an exclusive. Again, Patreon, you've already seen it. It's in a yellow folder. So I'll leave it at that. So if you haven't seen it, look at the movie coming out. Because, again, I buy stuff and I invest in things many times because of, of future events that will happen. Uh, like some of the animation sales, Blake Edwards' wife, if you don't know, Julie Andrews, is still working on a Pink Panther. I've talked about that before. Um, so anyway, I'll leave it at that. But those are some good areas. When you know something's going to be coming out with a certain person in it or something, or a song, or a group, or a re re reunion tour or something, there's going to be advertisement all over the place that you don't have to pay for. A movie coming out with somebody who I have stuff from, it's going to be advertised. His name's going to be on mega searches. So me tying my stuff into a release are perfect. That's, that's what big business does. When they release a movie, they have all the tie-ins. I'll be like a collectible tie-in for specific movies. And we've done this this way for many, many years, in all honesty. It's just a free way for some publicity. We list it and hold on to it till about the time when the, the release is because it's the hottest time it can be. When the premiere is, is happening, that's usually the best. So if the movie doesn't do super, you get all the push from the initial release of it and hopefully you get rid of most of it before if it bombs or something, just FYI. Um, yeah, I have a couple Queen items. They've already been listed for a while. I don't know if it'll be a big push or not. It's, it's England you're talking about who's going to be buying it, British. And with the cost and the VAT and everything else, I talked about this the other day, um, international sales are drying up. I still sell to England if it's cards and paper items that aren't very heavy that can go for the um, $14 or $15 range. I still sell to Canada, some to Mexico. Those are the biggest ones. And then France and Italy have been my next ones. I almost took Italy off, but that thing actually worked out in my behalf, so I left Italy on there. I, I lost part of a sale, but the insurance through eBay actually covered and made me a profit. I just didn't make as much, so I'm happy with it. So anyway. Oh, uh, where am I at? I'm sorry. Amazon Seller 99, how are you doing tonight? Hopefully things are going well. Brickhouse Salvage and Antiques, Steve Forgax. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but welcome. Hey, Biff. Biff Bofo, how are you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm threatening to stay on topic. I know I ramble a lot. If you haven't hit the thumbs up, please slam that thumbs up. I got 178 people in house on my end and 55 thumbs up. Show some love for the channel. Um, Cindy, you shot me an email having issues with my community. Let me know. I've probably in my inbox right now have 270 or more emails I haven't even looked at. Um, in all honesty, I don't get much chance these last week or so. Out of 
as of the day before, we were gone probably the majority of the last eight days from office. So I haven't even been home much in almost, what, nine days now since I was out today. And tomorrow I've got to be somewhere. Um, we don't really need anything now. We are still, I did spend a couple days trying to look at some land and some property and things like that. So a place with a big, huge storage building we looked at the other day. So... Uh, I don't know. I just haven't had much time to do anything. I do try to get to some when I can, but mostly all my efforts go to my Patreon page these days. Just FYI. Um, no disrespect at all. If I get a chance, I will try and sort that down, Cindy. Um, Cody Dion? Quote I Dion? I am probably butchered that. Apologize. Welcome, welcome. Andy Travis. Time to dig out my Queen memorabilia. Uh, Jeff Loftus. Hey, Jeff, how are you doing? Hopefully you're doing well. Good to see you in-house for sure. Don Wright, how are you doing? I, I I ran into someone who who recognized me, so holler to Don. I think my one of the kids said that they saw your comment there, so if I didn't get a chance or somebody didn't reply, I, it was nice meeting you. Um, don't hesitate to holler out if you run into me or see me again. Pleasant talking to you for sure. My son enjoyed the conversation, too. Um, I was at a thrift store. I don't get out much. I didn't have camera. I wasn't out. We were just goofing off. My son wanted something. And anyway, some cords. And anyway, that's what happened. I ran into somebody. Um, Don Wright, as I said, welcome, welcome. I found Charming Critters. Thanks. Sarah B., with the Charming Critters, the most expensive ones are the Halloween ones. Christmas do okay, and some of the, the magnets, and there's a few other ones. A large chunk of them, since they made so many, won't sell for a fortune. If you pay 50 cents or a quarter or something like that, maybe a dollar at best, you might get about eight to, say, nine bucks for the very common ones if you're lucky. Um, I usually only buy, unless I buy them in a bulk purchase, the Halloween ones, and I've probably got three or four of them, honestly, up there right now. I've got a couple Easter, which are okay, but the holiday ones... The earlier ones seem to do the best. And again, I pointed out that there's a video on those. Um, and it shows a mouse on it. It's talking about a collectible. But there's some that are worth far more than all the rest, as, as I said, the Halloween, the trick-or-treat series. Uh, Cindy and in South Summer does work well. Yes, that is good. 80-85% of everybody I talk to says that the end in South Similar does give them a boost. I don't just do end and sell similar, as I said. I actually go back in and I'll do a two-day sale. And a sales and markdown is exactly what I do. I've got videos showing what I do. Talked about it many times. We had been doing one-third of our store every 10 days. Now, we've upped that and we're doing a, a greater percentage so we can flip our entire store we want to do this month twice. So I, I've got an anchor store still. I know I could have dropped down and all that, but we play around a lot. So I want to be able to have those extra and for the two ninety nine or whatever it is for the fees. I, I'm okay with it because, again, I do a lot of messing around. I, I talk with other people. I help other people. It helps to have the ability for me to relist my whole store at least three times in the same month. No, that sounds crazy, but I can list 100,000 listings. I don't pay a dime extra. I don't have to worry about 5 or $0.10 cents extra listing over my, my allotment. And usually we run 64, 65,000 uh, used listings every month. So I only have enough to list my store over once more, no matter what. So anyway, we're, we're going to move it up. As I said, there won't be anything in my store that's uh, been on the site for longer than 15, 16 days max as of tomorrow or, or Saturday. So, and I'm, again, my results so far say that that's going to give me a bigger boost than anything else. Again, I'll be doing the uh, sales and markdown straight after it. Tommy Bernard, Don was anti sell similar years. Yeah, I was because it didn't need to be done for us. I, I did the tests. Again, if, if, and in South Similar, if I couldn't prove it was, was working, I'm not just going to do it because other people claim results. 99% of everybody who contacts me and says this works for them have never tested it. All they do is they turn on a feature or they promote something. They get some sales. So, of course, because they put promoted listing on and got some sales, they're always going to assume and tell me that, yeah, I get sales from doing it. But if I do like-to-like -like comparisons... It, 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 if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If the data shows me that I'm not getting any more sales whatsoever, there's no difference between 4,000 listings with it and 4,000 listings without it. I'm not going to do it. I'll redo that same test a couple of times, and if I never get results, I don't do it. 
So again, that's why I say the, what we're doing now started to work as of October 12th. Prior to October 12th of last year, I never had to do sell similar. My items just showed up because there wasn't competition. Probably 95, 98% of everything in my store, there's only one or two persons on all of eBay that have anything even similar to it. So I, I don't have competition for most of them. That's a good thing with antiques, collectibles, postcards and stuff. Even if they made a million of a postcard, which there, I don't think there's any postcards that they made a million of back then, there's still probably only one or two people that have it up. So you're, you're, the sell similar in those days didn't work. They, they weren't burying my listings like they are now. The minute they changed to item specifics, the ball game changed for everybody who sells what we do. Again, we I did uh, sell similar. If you go back two years ago or probably somewhere in that range, you're going to see me testing it. I even put a report up on exactly me testing selling similar coming up with the results. I test everything. I hear I hear stuff that you know I've never heard on YouTube at all that people have reached out to me or in groups. I've got I'm not the only one who tests. I, I again we converse with people in my Patreon group and I'm not just hey how you doing conversing. We're going into depth on what they're doing and I tell them what I'm doing, and the results are are always the same. Again I don't have I never had those results prior to October 12th of last year. That's the day that we were required to add. 10,000 item specifics and the whole search in those categories changed. Again, the end of September, what's it, September 29th, they're changing around some more categories. So if you're selling stuff in the new category changes, you're going to have to start doing a whole bunch more stuff probably again because the old searching won't work for it. eBay is, is, is changing it to item specifics category by category. They're probably stored on different servers, maybe even in different buildings, these items. So they're doing them, you know, by by how they are stored is, is what it looks like to me. They keep like items in the same database, so there's not any more issues. And, they, you know, it's, it's the way you do something with the database. So that makes perfect sense the way they're rolling it out category by category. Again, they're not going to just randomly do all of them. It would be impossible with how many categories they've now got on the platform. So again, it works now, and it definitely works now, and it works drastically now. In the past, you could keep, I had items up for you know six years prior to October 12th, and I never worried because stuff always sold. Now, if I end and sell similar, again, I've tried the, the, the resell. I just tried some the other day and didn't get the same results at all as sell similar, but if I end and sell similar, I've got all my location, my bin numbers, and my titles. I always can tell a difference because ones that I do that to, I'll sell a whole bunch from those categories, from those re uh, sold similar listings. It'll all be from the same one. I'll, I'll sell to like five or six different people, all from one small bin location, all at the same time, which never happens except when I do that to it, the end and sell similar. So I, again, they've changed the, the, the game rules underneath us. I'm not bitter about it. That's just the way it is. I'm, I've learned to overcome what they've done. And, and again, it's happened every time. It's turned into a challenge. We fixed it at, on, I think, the 24th, 25th, something like that, of October last year. We figured out what works the best. And again, we've changed it up a little bit now. Relisting our whole store every uh, twice a month increases. There's a postcard guy out there that lists his items. He relists them every single day, a bunch of them. And if you look in completed, uh, completed listings, not the sold listings, but completed listings, I wish I think if you type in Florida postcard, you're going to see the same postcard relisted hundreds of times, as well as a bunch of other stuff. And again, it must be doing something for him because he does it all the time. He's got quantity, of course, so I, there's, there's other things. So I'm not the only one who sees the more you, you end and sell similar, the more you refresh your listings, the... the, the sharper attention they get on eBay. Action. Raise your prices by a dollar. Lower them by a dollar. Raise or lower them by 50 cents. Change the, the spots on, on your, your title. And one other thing I have always said, the words to the farthest left of your title, the first words in your title of any listing are the most important. eBay UK actually, Ina on eCommerce Bytes actually has an article about that. Um, and that's again what I've been saying, what other YouTubers have been saying. The words to the farthest left should be the most important words you have in your title every time. Whether you want to shoot it off as, as historical and write the dates, whether you want to have a brand or a specific keyword. If it's a dog, you will want to put all the way to the left, like say pug as an example I always use because pug stuff sells like mad for us. 
as does Chihuahua and some other things too. But anyway, that's my take. That's that's the the gist on what works and what doesn't work for us. Again, if I don't do this stuff, my sales start to go down every time. Every and I, we're talking me doing this from October twelfth of last year through to right this very second today. I've run some new sales, and it's the same thing every time. It always works for us. Again, if it, it, promoted listings may be your your needed uh, activity, coupons you may need to add with that, or sales on top of it, or something else. And again, I, I, I don't care if you promote or not. I think everybody needs to refresh their items. I, I constantly still run into people say, well, it's not necessary, and they, they haven't done it. And I finally talked them into trying it, and they were whomped with sales for doing it. That doesn't work for everybody. There's 10 or 15%. It was about average that I would say that it doesn't work for based on the items that they sell. Most people who watch my channel, I would imagine, sell similar items or at least like these types of items. So they will probably get similar results. If you sell clothing and nothing wrong with clothing I have some good friends that still sell clothing as their main drive clothing's a lot harder Cloth clothing in some areas is a rat race what we get around here I couldn't live on I could not live on selling clothing we had to go somewhere else I didn't pick what I'm selling it picked me by what was available that's it. I, I was I was a clothing seller. I was a bookseller. I went. I was one of those guys who had the little attachment to your cell phone, and I could go in a building with no internet, have the whole database and what to buy, and I would scan books. I'd scan hundreds, thousands of books back in the day, till Amazon raised the prices on storage and all that kind of stuff. But it's it's not worth it for me. I just sell high dollar books, and if they're cheap, I don't mess with them. I used to be able to sell a ton of books that were cheaper, but I'd sell so many of them it didn't matter. Back when Amazon first got into this and you could send them in and stuff before they raised the storage fees so much, $5 profit on a book, even a $3 profit was great because you could sell 100 books a day. Not anymore, but back in those days you could. So you could mail in as many Home Depot boxes as you wanted or at least that size of box and you know get them moving really quick. You could send in 1,500 uh, books and sell half of them if they were good books the first week you had them up. And those days are far, far in the past. Um, Don Wright, your mom sold a book plate from Queen Elizabeth II's coronation today. I, I do, as I said, I do have a, a vase of her coronation up there, but it's from a Montreal visit, unfortunately. I think it would be better if it was a UK visit, but anyway. Avon, yeah, Sarah B. Uh, people say Avon doesn't sell and they don't mess with Avon. I've sold, the best things I've sold from Avon are Avon representative 14 or 10 karat gold service pins. And if they're old enough, they're actually gold. Um, I've had, I don't know, half a dozen or more. My mom used to, to have an Avon person come to her house when I was a kid. Uh, some of the toys my mom got were those little cubes that opened up with the little plastic uh, Tupperware animals in them. And they came from Avon. Tupperware you get from Avon at one point. Um, uh, with it. Or maybe the person did Avon and Tupperware at the same time. I don't know. But I know the Avon lady my mom bought the honeysuckle perfume from that she always wore when I was a kid had the Tupperware little toys or something, or maybe they were licensed to Avon. I'm not sure which, but Avon stuff can sell okay. The chess set, the pieces, if you have the entire chess set or the, the ruby glass um, dishes and things, some of those can go, go pretty good too. Uh, let's see where we at. Doesn't eBay suggest to not relist? I've heard them say uh, to relist. I know some people have been told that. I've, I've had people tell me that. I don't ask eBay on any of that kind of stuff anymore. To, to be truthful, I don't call eBay unless there's something I have to get an answer for. If there's a glitch or I can't do something, I don't even bother calling them anymore because usually by the time they ever answer my question or, or they just don't answer it, it's already been fixed or I've already figured a way around and it's not worth it. I've asked executives, you know, personally through LinkedIn and stuff because I've got some contacts here and there, but they're they're so flighty and they don't want to answer or legal tells them not to or they just ignore you because they don't want to give a straight answer. So I give up answer, asking eBay anything. Again, that's with any company, so it's not just eBay, but I'm actually fairly happy with the, the way eBay is going right this second. Again, we haven't had many glitches. My sales are, are literally right at just a hair below fourth quarter right this second. I'm 42 or 43% up from last month 
right now. But again, we were really aggressive this month, and we did a whole bunch more end and sell similar to instead of being 30 to 35 days of item you know length on time on the site, we've downed it to 20 ish, and now we're going to down it down to the 15, 16 day time frame and see what happens. You know, we'll go from there. Uh, so far, so good. So far, it's keeping my sales right where I want them to be. You know, we were worried a little bit with, you know, all the talk and stuff. But after we played around with our store and every day we're doing, you know, a couple hours worth of action on it, regardless if anything's listed or not, there's always at least an hour or two of stuff done in the mornings and then throughout the day and stuff. So there's always action on it, always responding to emails and all that stuff. Let eBay know that you care about that store and show some love to your store as much as you can. And I think that obviously helps. Again, I'm not. I don't. I, I'm not going to come to the point like a lot of other resellers that eBay's out to get you. They're going to screw you over. Maybe they are. I don't know. But uh, from my personal opinion and what I personally see, and some of the terrible mistakes they've made and, and comments that are made from reps and stuff on the phone, I just think they don't know what's going on with how it works. That's honestly what I truthfully think on what's happened to the search. I think they figured they could control it completely and force everybody into, you know, using promoted for the money, or they they just they just don't know what the the changes they did had on it because sellers are or buyers are having issues finding stuff as well. So you know, I, I, it's just the way it is. Uh, tomorrow's video we're going to go into a topic I've touched on before, but it's it's going to show you um, some sales and some offers in my personal store. And we're going to address a whole nother option and why it works on getting more sales and increasing your average sale price per buyer. So you can get that buyer, you can increase the amount of money that buyer is spending by doing something we're going to talk about tomorrow. It works. I'm not going to feed you any lie. It works just like for us. The end and sell similar as well as the sales always work. I, I have never seen something on eBay that works all the time before. This is This is like one of those things that there's no doubt in my mind that they've totally restructured it database wise uh, layout wise and the whole works otherwise this this wouldn't be the case um, LSGS Rob hey I know you you've been around for quite some time I saw men's I do remember you talking about clothing believe it or not pre-owned clothing never done self similar and have never had an issue with sales and sell 1520 I do utilize all of the tools and consistently list I, again it depends on what you're selling it depends on what you're selling again if you've got here, here's a good example uh, size 32 jeans is probably one 32 to 34 are, are probably the biggest most popularly used size of jeans if you were selling jeans that are like 20 inch waist 27 inch waist men's you're not going to sell as much if you're sell or buying ones that are a specific size, sure, some of the larger size will sell for more because they're harder to get. But overall, there's like size gaps where certain sizes of pants don't sell as well. At least that's from my experience. I know clothing sellers that still do well. It depends on what you're selling. Around here, most of what you'll find at thrift stores are just like mall brands and stuff. Again, I, I was just at one yesterday, and as I said, I ran into a, a, a subscriber, but... The, the point of it being that that's that's all I see around here. If you're in Cali or, or some place where there's a rich ritzier place, or like around here, there used to be a Savers right outside the, the nicest neighborhood in the city, or most expensive. I'm not going to say nicest, but because the people there were fairly rude. But the, 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 the most valuable, the richest neighborhood. And that thrift store, that Savers, was loaded with some of the best stuff you'll ever see in the whole city. There were people would just line up. They'd, they'd spend you know hours in the store waiting for baskets to come out. It was kind of almost like um, uh, Goodwill, the bins or something else like that is how I felt. Because you just everybody would bombard. They'd roll out three or four big, huge dump bins at that Savers and stuff. It's long since closed down, but you know, going to the right areas, going to the right estate sales are important too. When we when I used to do estate sales religiously, I would go to ones in specific areas of town based on what I want to find. Certain areas of town, I'm going to find the best soul records in town. I'm going to find the best jazz records or, or things like that. Old toys show up in, in more so in this area of town because of the type of people, the demographics of the people live there. Expensive shoes or belts or ties are going to show up at estate sales in the ritziest section of town. You know, Obviously, the estate sale companies, certain estate sale companies only handle this type of estate and vice versa and all that stuff too. So you just got to pay attention to all that. 
I play, I we used to play all those markets. I was, I was mostly a estate sale person for the longest time. Nowadays, I don't do many. I don't do garage sales at all, hardly, and I very rarely go to uh, thrift stores anymore at all. But let's see where we at. I saw a uh, where are we at. Uh, antiquarian bookman. I saw a video of an eBay employee at an eBay event in Australia that claimed nine months was a period that they considered an item to be non-productive and you would need to relist. Nine months. If I let my item sit for nine months, my sales are going to drastically. They're going to slide. They're going to. They're going to drag down. I let them do it for forty-five days and it went down. And the minute I switched it back up, the sales they they went right back up. And they sustained at that level or higher. There's no way the nine months is true, at least for what I'm selling. You know, I, I swear to you that there's there's every test I've done, and I'm always doing something. I'm always, always, always doing something. I've got a sale run on 29,000 items in my store right now. You can go look right this second, and it just started today. If you look at my old, I don't know if it does it show the the date on the items on on the other side. I haven't looked. I looked from the store side. You'll see if you can see my my list dates for things that there's nothing older than October 14th or 15th right now in my store. So I'm I'm gonna stand by that being the best options for us. Again, I, promoted listings may be required if you're doing something. There's probably, as I said, three percent of folks that I talk to, LS uh, GS Robs, one of those three percent then that have no problem and don't have to do promoted listings or the other aspects of it. You know, I, I can't say. I don't know. Have they have they done the item specifics in those categories? I don't know. I don't really remember on the clothing since we totally pretty much got out of clothing. Um, yeah, and Tommy uh, Bernhardt's saying the truth is eBay rotates traffic. Now, I've had people tell me that, but I there's... I will have to say that there's no proof whatsoever that that's, that's the case. As a person who's seen sales data for millions of dollars worth of locations when I was a regional manager, there's no, there's no solid numbers for anything. I mean, I'm, 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 I had 32 or 33 stores that I controlled for Einstein Brothers. And I, there was no rhyme or reason other than a season, uh, seasonality as to who got sales and who didn't there i don't again i don't i don't see a rotation by what my sales are i don't see it i, I know one day you may sell a thousand fifteen hundred dollars worth of stuff and then another day you may only sell a hundred hundred and fifty that's that's just life there's no there's no guarantee on that whatsoever i can tell you though that you should start tracking those big days and write them on a spreadsheet and you'll see the pattern a big pattern with when we get sales and when we have those big days are after rents paid or every other week, because a lot of people get paid every other week, or you know, the Social Security, whatever. There, there's a ton of reasons, and if you pay attention to those patterns, eBay shows you a month. If you, you know, track those patterns for a couple of years, you're going to see the same results for years. I don't think eBay. You could accuse eBay of rotating sales. I've got 15 years on a spreadsheet. There's no there's no rotation on, on 15 years of my data. It, do, it looks all the same. So maybe they're rotating some people. Again, I can't prove it either way, but there's no proof that they're doing it. My data would probably suggest that they can't be doing it, at least to us. I know somebody will say you're on YouTube, so they're probably protecting you. I, eBay hates me. I'll tell you for sure. Anybody who, who who's watched my channel, eBay hates me. And I don't doubt that for a second. Especially with me writing and helping with Ina and e-commerce bites and stuff, I, I guarantee they they blow me off. The, the the execs won't even talk to me anymore. So I gave up on them a while ago, as I said. But you know, no disrespect to the site itself. The people running it are the problem. eBay is still a good site, but I, I I don't I don't I will never agree that they're rotating sales based on factual data. I, track your data. Put all your stuff on a spreadsheet, and then every year ha add another uh, row underneath it. All the way down, and then look at this every month by month. If I looked at every December or every September, they're pretty darn close. Know your patterns. Know that you know after rent's paid or after a paycheck comes up that you'll have several people coming back. Every two weeks, there's people that buy from me. 
every two weeks. I've talked to them. I know why they buy every two weeks. I've got a retired person. She gets a check every two weeks. She used to be a school teacher. She buys a lot of religious items for me. I've talked about the three or four religious uh, purchasers that buy tons of cards for me, and it's every two weeks. So I get every other week sometimes, I'll get a ton of sales, fifteen, two thousand dollars $2,000 in a day, all in a very short time span. And then I won't see sales like that for a few more days or to the end of the week when, when somebody else has their two week. Holidays, again, if you track and you're slow, you'll see, oh man, I'm really slow right now. You might go back and see that you're slow every single year on those that same weekend or something. You gotta figure out why you're slow, which is pretty easy if there's events going around or like when college was back in, in, in last month. I had people say, oh, it's really slow. Well, I know it's gonna be slow because college are accepting people into the dorms before school starts, and that's nationwide. So it's not just the student traveling. Parents are taking their kids for the first time, leaving their house. Thousands, tens of thousands, probably a couple million people are on the road when college comes back in. So sales are always slower. Labor Day, people are outside barbecuing, picnicking, fireworks. You could have slower sales depending on that, for what, depending on what you're selling. There, there, there's a pattern. I do projections for everything. I do forecasts for what the sales should be every day of the week pretty much through the end of the year for every year I'm in it and I've got 15 plus years of data to compare it to and it all tracks the same again I, I would I'd be happy to say eBay or um, I think eBay is rotating the, the sales I don't think that's the case how could they rotate it when there's only one or two other people that are selling what I sell the exact things that I sell we're not there, there's not like to like of 99 percent of the stuff in my store Again, I, I'd love to say I could prove eBay was doing it because I would I would be all over the news. It would be all over the news. Uh, I, I don't see that. I really don't see that. And again, I'm not one to defend eBay if, if you know, I feel they're doing something wrong. I'll, I'll shout it all over the place. I don't, I don't care what eBay thinks anymore. I'm allowed to have an opinions on it, but I, I don't see that. I don't see them going after sellers. I think it's just they don't understand their own business. They're, they're lacking in the, the aspect. What, what eBay needs to be the most successful is to have a bunch of resellers running the site. A bunch of people who depend on eBay for their revenue to pay their bills and feed their kids and put a roof over their house or their love, whatever they have, whether it's animals or what. That's what they need is a couple of, I'm, I would never do it, but the, the point is they need somebody who has uh, understanding and knowledge. Just because you see the CEO saying, I sold this on eBay or I bought that, it means nothing to me. These people are only doing that just to say that they can say they sold something. They don't need the money for selling on eBay. They, maybe they're required to sell on eBay at this point. I don't know. I've had somebody tell me that before, but I don't know if it's true. I don't really care. You know, I, I just want to say it like it is, and, and that's what I see. I don't see rotation of sales. I've heard that hundreds of times. Again, no disrespect to anybody who states that, because maybe you're not tracking your maybe you don't have 15 years worth or 16 years worth of data on a spreadsheet but i'm telling you if you track all that stuff you're going to be able to do far better than if you don't if i know every year that on december 12th something happens i can do something ahead of time so if i would get a, a slump in sales for a few days i can ahead of time preemptively run a sale a little higher percentage or something that's why you do all that. That's why every business in the real world in brick and mortar does projections and they track every year's worth of sales. When I work in a re when I worked in restaurants as a regional, we tracked it by the hour. On a Friday, I'm calling my stores and getting numbers because they don't transmit their sales data or hourly sales or, or headcount until the end of the day when they process the, the charge cards. So I would call around to my stores. I don't care if I was off or not. I called on the Friday evening prior to close and saw it asked what their numbers were you know and, and you you can use that you, it, you always track that stuff i don't care if you're just a reseller with a couple hundred items just throw it on a spreadsheet use google docs it's free and it's not really anything it takes you 10 minutes once or twice a month to, to throw those numbers in there and keep them keep tracking them if you really want to be a reseller that that information is going to help you even if it's just for the sake of coming back in and running a sale or figuring out some marketing strategy ahead of time before the slow time happens. I can tell you when it's going to be slow any day, any month. Now, the, the time, let's say like a holiday is like the fourth Friday of a month or third Friday or whatever it is. That, the, the date of the week it is may change. 
So when you're comparing yearly sales of a certain day or certain time frame, just remember that those could fluctuate. So your, your graph on sales will be like wavy based on what day that falls on or whatever the case may be. So that's the only discrepancy. And as long as you understand that when you're looking at it, it all makes sense. It, maybe it sounds crazy, but if you really do that, you're going to be able to do better because you'll know ahead of time. Wouldn't it be great to know ahead of time when you're going to be slow? When there's routinely a, a summer slowdown for what you're selling, again, that's that's just what I've done. Maybe I'm anal retentive. Maybe that's overboard. But it, it's my sales are, are almost not quite, but almost fourth quarter sales, full fledged fourth quarter sales. I don't think I'd be there if I wasn't doing all this stuff. I don't think again we raised. When I know it's going to be slow, I increase the amount of discount. I increase the the sales and markdown discount percentage. When I know it's going to be rocking, I lower that down or just turn off sales in general. Like last year, I just turned off sales and markdown for like weeks because the sales were coming in. We were, you know, $13,000 weekends and stuff. It was a massive amount coming in. I didn't need them. Why discount something when the sales are just flying off the roof? So, I mean, that's just a take on it. Um LSGS Rob, I do sell similar for my old items because they continually sell and I list new listings. I, you have to do both, in my opinion. I've got 30,000 listings, so when I end and sell similar, I get sometimes dozens of sales within just a matter of minutes from me ending and selling similar and the minute I turn the sales on. The di here, here's another thing with end and sell similar too as opposed to just relisting or just listing new items not even looking at your old items anymore you've already got those items up all the work is done in them other than a little tweak so i can mess around and fix 200 listings just by ending and selling similar instead of spending hours to get 200 new listings up and that that those little tweaks are enough for me to sell sometimes five or ten percent of those items that i just ended and sold similar so it, it's it's I would always recommend doing both. You know, it you've got all the photos taken, you've done the research, you've sourced it. You know, all your labor is already almost in there. I mean, it's it's there for a matter of two or three minutes. I can end and sell similar two hundred listings. So it's a two minute endeavor to make fresh listings that that aren't shown to people or are buried because they've been on the site too long. That's that's my take on it. But again, I do both. We try to always list some items and we stagger them. So maybe I don't have somebody listing a whole mess of items. I'll save a few and I'll list four or five in the morning just to put a couple items up in a specific category. Or maybe I, I just picked up something. I want to get my money back from the purchase. I'll take a quick photo of one or two items out of a massive purchase. Get my money back and the stuff can just sit there until I get time to mess with it. No sense in, in keeping you know money invested into things when you can get your money back and have any earning interest in the bank or whatever the case may be. BL Treasures uh, databases. Yeah, I, I've heard that talk too, but uh, databases I don't think will ever go away in the, the sense of how they are today because businesses, manufacturing still use them. One of the, the places um, around here, it's a, it's a big factory. They do glass and windows and stuff. They still have Windows 95 running on stuff, and it works perfectly fine. It's not hooked up to the Internet, so it doesn't matter. But I don't see them going away like, like that yet. And sell summary list used to work okay, but now everyone does it, so it doesn't have the same effect that it used to. Now, Kelly, on that, I would say it depends, again, on what you're selling. If you've got unique items, it, it's going to show some because, it's again, it's going to be refreshed. It's going to be new to somebody. If you're selling in flooded categories and everybody's listing and relisting the same exact item, of course that's not going to mean anything when everybody starts to do it. But if you've got unique items and stuff, that's the difference. Again, I, with, with unique items or, or with like items that there's a bunch of that 100 other people are selling, you probably have to do promoted listings instead. You know, eBay once told me, um, I'm not going to give the guy's name, but he says, you know, these are all tools. Some of them may work for you, some of them may not, but it's up to you to figure out what works for your store and what doesn't. We've tried them all. I've done promoted listings. We promoted our whole store years ago, but I won't do it again. But the, the point is we've tried it all. When somebody's recommended, even like Sell Similar, two years ago I tried that. And I got no difference, no boost. It was time consuming. Now again, I get a boost from it. You test it out. If it works for you, great go with it it may not be what works for me though 
I can only tell you what works for me and the, the majority of people who I talk to. And ex exactly what I'm saying, the end and sell similar, as well as me running sales works best. I've tried the coupons. I know somebody who the coupon, oh, I know a couple of people who do the coupons all the time. I don't know all their ifs, ands, and buts, and how they're promoting them and all that stuff, and whether they're, you know, emailing people and contact. I don't know what they're all doing, but I know there's coupons that work for some folks. They have a coupon on live all the time on some items. I know people that do end and sell similar. They'll do sales and markdown and coupons all at the same time. You know, I could lower the prices on my items. It doesn't guarantee I'm going to sell them. I'm still going to. If I lower my item price down like 20, 30%, permanently lower it down, I'm just going to get offers at the same same discount as they were percentage-wise when they were higher priced. So I'm going to be losing the same amount of money. So why lower the price when the sales and markdown builds the perceived value? The perceived value gets you the sale, and I sell the items for more than most people in the first place. You know, that's how it works. It works for me that way. I think the conclusion for most people, though, is you have to do something. The days of just setting your stuff there for the majority, again, there are some folks that don't have those issues. Depends on the category, the items, and what you're selling, but for the most part. Sourcing treasures... Uh, talking about the, well, the, the 78s are shellac. They're not technically vinyl. If you're talking about the 78s, I ha I've gotten, I used to buy a lot more records. We buy 45s, five or 10,000 at a time. I'd buy LPs, a couple thousand to, I think the biggest one we got was around like 12 or 14,000 LPs. Uh, a few years ago, I did video from one. I think we got like almost 9,200 LPs on that one. Um, I've talked about LPs for those in Patreon and my YouTube membership. You know what I'm doing with LPs, but the market's changed in vinyl. So if you're not aware on what's going on, you, you should be paying some close attention to it. 78s are easy money for us, but they're time-consuming if you don't know what you're doing. They're risk factor if you don't know how to pack them. I got videos on all that stuff, but grading uh, 78s is much easier than grading most other records. Damage to a 78 will play far easier on a 78 than they would on any other speed of record out there. So just keep that in mind. That it's the the construction of the disc, the groove distance, and you know you can I I can play a cracked 78. I've sold cracked 78s. You can play a 78s with with um, scratches in them fully without them skipping. Even though if that same scratch was on a 45 or an LP, it wouldn't play. So you know they're more forgiving. You have to send them in a. I send them in a twelve by ten inch, a twelve by twelve by ten inch box is what I mail my my seventy uh, eights, and I buy twelve by twelve by twelves, and then I cut the top down just to save a little space and a little cushioning room, so I don't have to put as much cushion. They weigh uh, two pounds and eight ounces. Most every single disc I send out, they're sent in media mail. Uh, again, it takes some some packing material for it. You can get end cuts for bubble wrap if you if you want to do it that way. I usually just use the scraps or the the tissue paper from eBay sometimes. Lately, though, when we go to sell these, I'm buying two big rolls of of end end uh, end cuts from the bubble wrap place down there. Fifteen twenty bucks for like a thousand feet of of bubble wrap up, and I'm gonna bubble wrap them all because it'll be a lot quicker. I may even ask them to to manufacture. Uh, 12 by 9 inch boxes for me depending on the, the cost on those just just this what I do I, I love 78 records my first highest valued record ever sold my first second third fourth was a 78 and then after that I got into Northern Soul and those turned into me my highest we've sold a single 45 records the highest highest one I ever sold was forty two hundred dollars for 145 that I bought in a massive purchase maybe had a nickel into it um, my the majority of the thousand plus dollar items have been records that we've sold in all honesty there's been some paper and some comics and some trade cards but and some stamps but it's mostly the the majority of my thousand dollar plus items are you know records the majority of my two thousand dollar plus items are almost all records to be honest with you it's usually easy money 78s most people don't mess with my competition for sourcing them is cut down by like 70% because 
most resellers won't touch them. They're afraid of them. They don't know how to look them up. They don't know the other sites. So uh, I buy stuff that everybody else leaves behind. 78 records are the best. 45s have gotten to be not necessarily flooded, but the amount of people sourcing them and trying to scoop you out is increased greatly. And people show up a day or two ahead of time if they know a sale is going on. And it's, it's gotten to be cutthroat. And I'm not willing to play that game. I'm, I'm mellow when it comes to that. I'm not going to fight to get something. I got more than enough to sell for probably the rest of my life, to be honest with you. Buy stuff that sells before it goes stale and never a worry. If you can find stuff that sells real quick, yeah, great, more power to you. But the majority of people I know, probably 75% or greater, can't get something that's going to immediately sell. It's just... I, I talk to thousands of people. I've talked to more people doing this than anything else I've ever done in my life. And I had hundreds of employees at, at the restaurants. But I can't get stuff that sells quickly. 3% maybe, 1%. You know, it's, it's just not there around here. Everybody, even the stores themselves, like Goodwill around here, sends all the good stuff to auctions. The the bins is three hours away in any direction. Good uh, Salvation Army is the same thing. They've got some local auction they must be doing. The small mom and pops are hit or miss because if you're not there on one day of the week, all the stuff's gone. So, you know, it's just not possible anymore. The estate sale companies are raising the prices. They sell half the stuff online around here before the estate sale even opens their doors. Or they'll, the two guys will show up and they'll pick it out before the, the estate sale company even opens the sale. Or they'll call their buddies and they'll do it. So, again, it depends on if you can get the stuff. If I could get stuff that would sell quick, I'd be happy. But I'm an old school person. I'm, I'm an antique guy. I used to set up at the flea markets. I had antique booths in multiple, including in Meridian, Mississippi. I had multiple booths in one antique mall alone, and stuff just sits. I don't mind that atmosphere. The more stuff I have up, the bigger my reach is, the bigger my footprint is on eBay, and the more sales I get. You know, I don't, I don't, I could not list and still be selling ten thousand dollars a week just because we've got so much stuff up. So a few tweaks here, a few tweaks there, and I get sales, and I don't have to worry about it all the time. If I do the end and sell similar and and um, do the sale, I could get away with not listing new items for a couple days a week or even more. When we went on vacation, but I was still doing end and sell similar because I brought brought my laptop with me, I didn't lose any sales. My sales were solid, even though I didn't list. So, it, again, it depends on how your business is set up, is what I would say. I don't mind having thousands, tens of thousands of items up. I would rather be one of the biggest sellers of vintage paper, in all honesty, in general. These days, having mass quantity up... Again, tomorrow's video. Watch tomorrow's video if you're wondering on what having quantity up does for you. We're going to go into some numbers. But the, the I would rather have quantity up because I get far more sales than if I just dealt with the, the few things I could get that would immediately sell. It just it doesn't work that way. Even like the G.I. Joes I just got in, they were free even. Um, yeah, sure, they're going to sell, but I'm going to wait a little while, and I don't care if they don't sell till Christmas. I'm going to get top dollar for those. Again, I don't have to sell any specific item today, tomorrow, or the next day. It doesn't matter. I've got enough quantity up where I've got breathing room these days. If you've got to list something just to get the income in, you don't have any breathing room. You don't have any. You don't have that that um, that that uh, gap there that you need. You need like uh, some breather room, a cushion, I would say for your business and having quantity up and being able to just play the you know tweak in your listings game is far better than worrying about where I'm going to get new stuff to list I guess is, is the point there um, again that's my take I, I've always said these same things this is truthfully how I handle my business and it works great for us it may not work great for you it depends on what you're selling you know Tommy if it works great for Tommy that's great I wish him the best of luck just if it works for somebody else perfect this is what works for me. I can only tell you what works for me. And I can, I swear to you, it works for me very, very well. Um, Peddling Profits, how are you doing this evening? Uh, Don, I haven't done end and sell similar in a while, but have done end and relist a few times lately. Results in a few extra sales, but nothing to write home again. Again, I honestly feel that end and sell similar is the best option and gives you the best results. We've done... 4,000 listings tests. So I do 4,000. Again, I can do 4,000 listings with nothing, all in the same category, mind you, with me doing nothing extra to them. 4,000 listings with me being doing end and sell similar, and then 4,000 listings with me doing 
and in relist. And the sell similar always, 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 always is like two or three times what any other thing I do. The rest are within the margin of error. So the only thing that I, I can see that works, at least just for me, I don't, can't say what it works for everybody, is end in cell similar. And again, the, mat, the metadata is why I'm always cautious on using any, I, I will never do cell similar from another person's listing as well. I would not, never ever do that just because there could be some stuff coming from there too. I, I try to only do it to my own listings. Chris Star, all relisting uh, does is bump it up to the top of newly listed, which people check to see if they are any fresh deals. There is nothing magical about it. I didn't say there was anything magical about it, but I think it does more than that because if your items have been auto relisted by eBay, they're dragging and not going to show up. Even if you do, they automatically relist. So you have to do it manually to actually get the boost. There's a gap in the time frame between when it stops and starts that way. My listings are off, are, are off for a little while. They're not, you know, there's a, a minute or so gap in it. And I think that plays into it too. It breaks the, the auto relist cycle. The biggest thing, if you're letting eBay auto relist it, again, saying, hey, it's going to put it at the top, the, the biggest factor when that happens is that you know it, it lists the, the original list time in that listing. That's what needs to go bye-bye. So if you're if you're just letting eBay auto relist, it, it knows it's a stagnant item that's been on the platform for a length of time. So whether it's relisted or not, you're not going to get the boost. A self similar is a new item. It's it's like a brand new thing to the site. So there's a difference between producing a brand new item on eBay versus letting eBay keep relisting the item to, to say it's fresh. The item that you sell similar is always going to get more attention than the one that was auto relisted. Again, because it's carrying baggage with it. It's got that in, initial list date from months ago if you're letting it uh, auto-relist as it, as it normally would do. that's Again, that's, that's what I see on that. Test it yourself. You may have different results, but I know what my results show me, and I'm, I'm sticking to that because I've tested it, God, hundreds of times, I would guess, at this point. Uh, this, this is how I pay my bills. I, I've got to be on the ball so I'm not losing money on stuff. I've got to be on the ball so I can... You know, keep the the business rolling in the right direction. So I, a lot of people don't don't see it that way. You've got to see it as your 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 main business. You've got to dive in and and figure out all these little aspects, all these little tricks and tweaks that you can do to get things rolling. Testing, you've got to test. If you've only got a few hundred listings, you can't do that yet. But you know, writing down your sales and tracking them as you grow your business is the best way. Knowing that, you know, January, whatever date might be slow or knowing the holidays and tying in, knowing when, again, writing down your sales ahead of time, writing down notes when things are going good or, or things like that, knowing when things should be listed ahead of time so you have enough advancement to get them on. So when the, the peak time frame for like holiday items is there, you already got your stuff listed and ready to go. Uh, that's, that's just the way it is. Again, I, I did this for a national company. And I can say that that helped me understand the numbers are the, the biggest key factor in there, as is having a baseline to compare your sales to. In as a restaurant uh, regional manager, I handled 30 some stores. I could compare stores in the same basic you know area that basically covered the same or similar neighborhoods to see if one store was doing one thing and another store was doing something else, why one store was floundering and the other one wasn't. I mean, as a, as a business owner, whatever you're selling, your, your thing is to figure out the patterns. Patterns are always great in any type of business. And then figuring out where you're deviating and where you can you know swing your sales back. And you've got to figure out the, your deficiencies, what's hurting you, what, where your bottleneck is in your business. Uh, another thing that most people don't do is they're looking at eBay as a whole. They're looking at their store as a whole. Break it down by categories, by type of items that you are selling. You may be selling something that only gives you like a 5% profit margin or 10% profit margin and takes a lot longer to sell. And you may have had the opportunity to sell things that you know will give you a 50% profit margin and sell really quick. But you may not know that if you're not breaking your items down and looking at the actual details of your store, such as which items give you the most profit, which items sell the best, what's your best sell-through rate item. Are you able to get those items? Are you just grabbing whatever and listing things because you think they'll sell, but you're not paying attention to things like how long it takes you to photograph the item and list it? 
I don't I try to never these days unless you know they're better items to list anything that takes more than a, a duplex scanner or a couple of photos it's another reason why we're we do more 78s and 45s than anything else in the vinyl section because I only do two photos it cuts my list time in half I don't have to describe a, a LP cover or an insert or, or any of that kind of stuff you know so you know that's just an aspect I, I that's all comes into play on what, what you list how you do your business and stuff hey the stun law one how are you doing good to see you back in house too LSG Rob, I don't have any hottest items by any means, and I have one no sale day on the past 18 months, and that was because I got rid of 70% of my store at the time to restructure and rid of the garbage. Again, it depends on what you sell. I, I can't speak for, for you specifically, but I can tell you that the majority of people, like 80, 85% of the people that I personally talk to are probably on this feed, have similar results to what I'm saying. Again, I know people that sell clothing. And they do extremely well. I mean, they got a new car just the other day. So I know they're doing very well. And they didn't take out a loan. I know they paid cash. So, you know, I'm not saying you can't do it in clothing, but you got to be in the right area and you got to have the right items. Again, around here, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to sell $10 pieces of clothing. I don't want to sell a $15 piece of clothing with free shipping that I had to pay three or four bucks for. You know, again, I try to list so many items up an hour, at least value wise. I do the 400 or better an hour in listed price. For me, clothing will take me 10 times as long to do as opposed to postcards or something. And I'd rather do that. I, I may be able to get six, eight items of clothing up in an hour if I'm lucky. Again, I'm just throwing a number. I don't, couldn't even tell you anymore how many I could get up in an hour. But, but I can list 50, 60 items in the paper categories sometimes, again, depending on what it is. That's about max. I don't think I, 60 is pushing it even. Um, but that's with a duplex scanner and two photos or, la or you know, uh, uploading. I would rather get more up and stuff and give more action on the account. I can get more out of that. You know, again, it depends on what you're selling. Clothing, though, is is a lot harder than any other category at this point for most people. Again, Rob's, Rob's one of the that 3%. He would be like somebody I personally know probably in that same ballpark. He's one of the luckier people. He's got better photos than most people. One good thing on clothing, though, a lot of the people that are selling clothing are taking terrible photos. So if you're better on photos than them, you're going to sell over them. If you know the keywords better, you're going to sell over them. Like um, like cuts and, and dress styles and stuff. I wouldn't know what, what type of cut this is or what type of sports coat it is. But if you know those words, you do far better. You know, and that's from somebody I know. I don't get into that too much. I've sold some in the past, but I don't, I don't get in. I don't care about all that. I'm not worried about style. I, you know. I used to wear a, a tie and a sports coat to work for a while when I was regional and stuff all the time for years. So I, I don't care to wear them anymore these days. But Hot nip drop flips. Maybe I've messed that one up there. But welcome. Hey, Dave Midwest Picker, another YouTuber in-house. Dave's got some good videos as well. Now Tommy's sitting here. Tommy's saying that it's you get reserve spots and best match as well um, when you relist. I I've done those tests too. You'll get far better viewer if the person that's search, uh, searching for your item changes the search results from eBay's forced best match to newest to oldest. I can I I, I can I can show you hours. I've recorded it even. The the mo majority of the time the best match is not is not the newest item. I can. We've counted them. I I can give you a spreadsheet going over what shows up for best match because again I've been trying to express that that's that's not the best match. If you look for here's a good example. I look for Weebles two or three times a day. My best match is all the stuff that I don't care about every time. If I want to see new Weebles listed, I have to change the search results to newest to oldest every time. Any collector that's a diehard collector that looks on eBay that that that's really a collector they look every day. The newest to oldest is the only option they will use. It's the only option I use for everything I look for. Again, because the best match is what eBay is pushing for you. I don't have the results that, that Tommy's saying there, and I've tested that one. I've tested that one for hours. 
I did spread. I just I even did a video on Patreon not too long ago about that exact same thing, and I showed it happening in real life. And I I think I've even shown that on here. That's not the results that I get. The new items do not show up anywhere near the top. And with when the minute you change from best match to newest to oldest, you only get two promoted listings, and they're at the very bottom of the entire page on the very bottom left. That's it. And again, that's I've got video hours of that stuff. You can see exactly that that's what happens. I don't care what you're looking for. That was the same thing that happened every time. The promoted almost expl uh, disappear. I had two promoted at the very bottom of the list. On every time I switch, out of 240 listings, there was two promoted. Because I switched from best match, which had, we counted them. I can give you count numbers too. Like 70 of them were promoted listings on best match. So what's that? 25% or so were best match uh, were promoted listings. Somewhere in that range. I, I tracked all this stuff. I'm, I'm anal retentive about the data. The data runs our business and it runs it very well. But I don't have that result with, with at all with best match. I don't care what eBay says. That's not how it works if you're looking for weebles or any of the stuff that I look for. The best match are not new items 99% of the time. Again, my, my personal results. And you can watch the videos. You can see. I know I had it on here. I did it on a live show too, probably about two or three months ago. I showed those the, the difference between best match versus newest to oldest. It was night and day. Again, that's my results. I've done it. I've dug into that for I don't know how long, for months, years we've done those types of searches. You know, again, I'll, I'll put, be happy to put another one out if anybody doubts that, but I've looked through that for a long time. And that's that's the results I get from that. Um, yeah, I don't promote, but I get sales too, but I do the other stuff. Again, we're back to the good item. You have to have a good item to do that. And most people aren't getting the best items. So again, like I was saying, if you don't have the right items, you're not going to get the results Rob's getting. So you have to have good items. Uh, that's what it comes down to. And most people, 3% of their items are really hot, good items, and that's it. So if you're not able to get them, you're not able to do that. You have to go with volume because you're not going to have the best items out there. So if you're still struggling, you don't have the hottest items out there, which is a, the majority of every... I look at stores all the time. I help people out. Though I don't always publish them because they'll reach out to me directly. So for those on Patreon, I do store reviews personally, all kinds of stuff for that. I've looked at hundreds of stores, and it's always the same same aspect. Most people don't have the hottest items. They don't have those great items. My items are good, don't get me wrong, but it always comes down to having the right person online at the right time. Um, let's see here. Uh, I refresh 130th. Hang on. Somebody else is talking about refresh. I know I'm way behind on feed today. Yeah, I saw somebody just put end and uh, sell similar makes the system think you uh, listed a whole bunch of brand new items. And that's what I think it is too. It's not just the, the fact that it's a new item. There's a whole bunch of criteria that go into it, including like your feedback, your response time for, for emails and stuff. Somewhere out there, there's somebody who claims to have a list and they've sent me like a screenshot. I couldn't see the whole page. I don't know if it's true. It could be somebody trying to con me. That's why I haven't published it on here because I don't know if it's real or not, but that, that explains some of these aspects of it. And it's supposedly from an eBay person. Sometimes people have sent me internal documents from eBay. I'm, I don't ask for them. I could care less if you send them or not. But, you know, there's there's a bunch more that goes into them showing your items, apparently, as well. If you've got bad feedback, you're already going to be, you know, um, and, and the, the negative side for how much they show would be my guess. That's why eBay built into the user agreement. They don't have to show your items at all. You know, they've got the ability to ghost your items if they've been stagnant, if, if you've done something wrong. I know, and again, I can't prove this either. I'm, I'm, it's here nor there. But I know I've seen if I complained about something, I might not get, you know, very many sales for a few days. And I've heard it from lots of people. Maybe it's a unintentional aspect that there's some negative mark on your account, or who knows. But I'm not going to come out and say that eBay is, is um, intentionally going after me if I had an issue. It could just as easily been, you know, something going on and not as many people are buying. You know, it's there's no there's no rhyme or reason to some of that. Again, I lost where I was at in my feed. I wanted to see. 
See, Annie's saying she uses 12 by 12 by 4. Yeah, I, I don't know. I've been thinking about getting smaller boxes, as I said, but I've done, I've mailed so many. If I keep the same size, I can get the cost down because I can order them and use them for tons of things. I ordered the 12 by 12 because I use those for um, all my cardboard. So I can buy a pallet of them for like, I don't know, 42 cents a box, somewhere in that range for the same quality as eBay boxes. And then I get the eBay boxes and they're easy to store. I need a volume. I need a large amount of boxes that are identical just to make it easier. I mail sheet music in those 12 by 12s. I mail comic books in the 12 by 12s. Again, I cut the boxes up and all that, but everything can, most everything up to a certain size can go, in, or can be uh, mailed with the 12 by 12. It's just a, a cost factor. I'd have to go out and buy specialty probably. Again, I'll have to look into that, but uh, where is that one comment? We're going to end it in a few minutes, though. I know I've been yapping for a while here. We've got 217 people in house. If you're enjoying the conversation, please slam that thumbs up. Where is that? I wanted to read that one comment, and it's... I guess my feed is so far off now. I can't even go back far enough, I guess. Yeah, I can't even see where that last comment was anymore, I don't think. Uh, perceived value. Somebody's asking on perceived I use perceived value for everything. Just the act of the 3x price uh, structure we use and then using sales and markdown um, is a perceived value. So if someone sees, wow, it's 30% off the list price, that's a pretty good discount. Sometimes I may even uh, do an offer to a watcher. Now, I've talked about this, and, and I, I, people still don't get it. The majority of our sales come from offers I send to watchers or just offers coming in. But for me to be able to send out a ton of offers to watchers, the sales and markdown does it. So again, I don't mind doing the, the extra tweaks and works in it. So I don't I can get routine sales without listing new items if I do this other stuff. So if you want some free time, you want to do, you know, do something else, you can uh, get away with not relisting if you do all these other aspects that I'm talking about. It, it, it works. It works for us. It works very effectively for this for us. Again, I'm not trying to stray anybody or tell you, you know, it's gonna hundred percent fix your store. Again, it depends on what you sell. I can tell you without a doubt the people that sell the same types of items as I do have similar results for the most part, 80-85% of what I have. And it's not by chance or luck, it's it's just the way the system seems to work if you're doing the same steps like that and sell similar or, or whatever it takes to get your stuff moving, promoted listings if you have to. I mean, that's, that's the basis on it. You have to do something these days. There's no way to avoid not doing something, you know? Uh, what's 11 of 20 are shared between organic new listings and auctions if there is enough results these are factual statements I can only go by what I personally and physically have seen when comparing like to like items with tests and a baseline I, that's all I can tell you I look for weebles every day of the week every day two or three times for the wife it's got one of the biggest collections in the country I look for other items too every day of the week and the majority of all new listings do not pop up on best match for us it, it, your best match is based on your look, uh, what you've looked for. If you constantly look for the same types of items, they're going to push those items on basic searches if there's a keyword that relates to those automatically. So before I even type in Weebles, I've already got half the stuff ready to show up on it uh, again ahead of time. Um, again, go back and watch that video. I, I got a live show on there showing what happens versus best match, newest to oldest, and oldest to newest. Most collectibles most people who are collectors are going to use the option newest to oldest and again that is partially why uh sell similar creates a new listing it's going to show up as a new item i know what my my um listings show up when i do uh, just a random search and it shows the best match because ebay forces the best match on you 
and they've done that now for like two years. I've been looking at that for a very long time because the search results change when you go from best match and eliminates most of the promoted listings. I know a lot of people say, well, promoted listings is the, for internal listing to promote and all this other stuff. I, I don't care. It's not the point. I, most people, most collectors that, that are going to buy the stuff that I have aren't going to be looking at it. If they find what I have and they like it, they're going to buy it. They're not going to be worried about all the other junk that may be semi-related to it if they're promoting it. I personally don't buy off a promoted listing link ever. Most of the time they don't even show up because I just turn on ad blocker and most of the time they are gone. So anyway, it just depends. Just depends. Yeah, and you don't need views or watchers at all to sell items at all. And I know people say, well, I didn't even have a view, so how, how could it have sold? They could have just liked it and bought it straight out. I see it all the time. And I, you don't have to have a watcher to sell. I don't, I don't even look at views, to be honest with you. I never look at the views. It's probably been months since I ever looked at the views on my items. It, it doesn't matter. My, what I worry about is the dollar amount I sell per day. If it stays in a certain range, I'm happy. I don't care. And it usually goes up. It's uh, I'm up like three to five percent every year, bare bones minimum. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't affect me. Again, I don't worry about quantity or anything. I'm looking at the dollar value. How much profit am I making a day? If I make a thousand dollars a day, I have to, and I only sell one item. I'm fine. If I have to sell twenty items to make a thousand dollars a day, I'm fine. Who cares? And I only can do that with quantity. It only works with quantity for me. Um. Somebody's asking, hang on, let's get to one more. Maybe from Sweden. I have done a lot of sales in Sweden, but on eBay, I have hard to get any views. Some ideas how to do it. It depends. I, I buy from, from eBay's foreign platforms. I buy from a uh, UK site. I buy from German, uh, eBay in Germany. Uh, the Netherlands is a really good one, too, which we buy. From, I probably buy from six eBay sites. And each site has things that sell better than other sites. If it's like, say, Australia, you're going to be hard-pressed to sell something that isn't collected in Australia to, to someone outside of Australia. If you're in a Swedish market or you know European market or something, you're going to have to be selling something that's going to be collected in your local area specifically or your, your local platform area. Wherever the platform reaches, that's where you want the items to be of interest to. Um, like I sell foreign, I sell records. I sell foreign records. I sell Northern Soul, which is collected a lot by those in England. They know what to look for, and they know it's going to be listed here. That stuff isn't listed for the most part in England, though, or on the UK side, at least not on eBay, I should say. Each country I've had different experiences with, with different types of items either being listed or being sold. You can look at solds for the other platforms, the other eBay sites, if you didn't know that. So you can get an, a gist on stuff. Sometimes I even use other sites, other eBay sites, to price like a British item from the British site to see what it goes for there. Because my buyer is going to be a British person. You have to obviously calculate international shipping and VAT and all, but that's just another aspect. I, I can't say specifically on a foreign site what you would need to do to boost it. Because again, I don't know the, the traffic. I don't know the bounce rate. I don't know the specifics on, on what you're selling in that, that country's platform. It's hard to say. Uh, I know that, you know, like postcards, it's a U.S. thing. If I, I want to sell a bunch to another country, it has to be very specific. And only a couple countries like China and England would be the only two buyers, maybe a few Canadian ones too, but mostly every postcard I sell is a U.S. purchaser. So again, if you're going to list a bunch of postcards on, on U.K. and expect them to sell on the U.K. site, you're not going to do it. So, you know, what I sell here in this country may not, you know, translate very well to what would sell on another platform. Look at the, look at the solds if you're, you're trying to sell. I know there are, I've got some friends who sell. They do the eBay International where they sell on several other sites and the fees and stuff. I, I got stuck in it once and I, I got myself out of messing with that crap. But look at the sold listings on the other sites for Grand Out Loud. That's another way to track down prices if you didn't know that. And it's an easy way to find similar items if you don't know what, what you're looking at because it's in a foreign language or it's not a U.S. item and you're here in the U.S. You can go to a foreign site if it's made in France and look at the French site and look at similar items there. You may have to use Google Translate and translate the keyword and, and you know use the French version of that word in the title. I know Weeble in, in, in the German site, there's like three different versions of the word Weeble depending on Bibbly Booze or Bibbly... 
I'm, I don't know how it's pronounced. I, I, was, I, I know how to spell it, but and then Weebles in Germany is spelled completely different. W e i b l e s, and and again, there's like three three different uh, Spanish versions for the same term, and then there's different companies that make it. So I know I'm rambling now, but we're gonna end it on there because I'm past the 8:30 mark. But uh, I gave you the, the the truth based on my personal data as well as probably a half a dozen other people that I talked to on a very long and uh, a sustained more than a year on these exact same topics. And we're talking about me with quantity and the other folks I talked to with quantity. They come to the same conclusions, not based on what I'm telling them I'm coming to, but on their own. I'm not telling them this is what I'm happening first and, you know, oh, yeah, that's what's happening to me. These are people who, who I trust. I've seen their stores. I've seen the volume that they sell. You know, we, we share things. And I, I can tell you what I've stated today is what I personally see on the items that I sell and I deal with. Somebody else may have different results. Show the data is, is what I would say is, is what I would recommend is, is look at the data itself. If you don't have a baseline, you, you have no way to say any of that, any things are happening. A baseline, again, you've got to have an unreactive uh, baseline, something that it, it's not affected by whatever you're doing and trying to figure out if it works or not. I, I can check 10,000 listings to 10,000 listings, and I can tell you if I get an increase or not. And one time doesn't mean anything. Uh, the odds of it happening once are, are you know, 50-50, toss of a coin. But if I do it 100 times, and all those 100 times, the same thing happens. That's, that's, in my opinion, that's the scientific method. That's as close to being verifiably true as humanly possible. That's what a scientist would accept if it's repeatable, that that is fa as factual as you can get for something like whatever we're talking about. And, and I use that as the baseline for everything. I have to be able to compare it to it. Again, that's just like with the, the so many people tell me, well, I turned on promoted listings and I sold a bunch, so it definitely works. Well, you, you don't know that. Cause and effect. Causality doesn't mean that the effect that happened afterward was based on you doing that action. You've, you've, got, to you've got to have like to like. I've got a couple of stores, so I can literally do the exact same item with similar, if not the same keywords, just in different orders and see what happens. If I've got 50 of the same item in one store and 50 of the same item in another store and one store is on sale and one store isn't, but I'm selling just the ones that are on sale, it's obviously the sale is going to work if it happens after you do it a few times every single time you get the same results. And that's, that's the scientific method, and that's what I would recommend for as a business. There's no conjecture. Don't ever speculate. Don't conjecture. If I tell you something, try it out yourself, and if it doesn't work for you, don't do it. If somebody else tells you something, don't just trust that that's how it works because they may not have a clue. They may have never tested. They may have no data to back that up. You know, I, I took business classes in college, and again, that's not necessary, but that helped. That gave me some knowledge that I would have never had otherwise. I worked in, in uh, a, a national company as a regional manager for Einstein Brothers for many years. I worked for Disney for 10 years as a management. I, there's... There's certain things that you can take to the bank. If, if I wanted to take to the bank like my sales numbers, I could show, show my multiple years of sales to show that I'm good for the money. I mean, it, it's, they will trust my data based on you know, the, the sourcing work, that, that it's true, that it's accurate. That's, that's how things work. You, you've got to be able to show without a shadow of a doubt that this works or this doesn't work. And that, it, it all comes down to that. Nothing. I don't. I don't. If somebody tells me something works, I, I'm not gonna believe it until I see it myself. It's repeatable, and I can do it all the time. If it's not repeatable, it's it didn't work. It's just some one-off thing, and it's just a random event that happened. Large number of sales are just random events. I can't guarantee I'm gonna do a thousand dollars before noon every day of the week. Some businesses maybe you can because every lunchtime you get business, and if you're in a restaurant or something, and there's always a full house because. Maybe you're the only restaurant, but it doesn't work that way with clothing, with collectibles or anything else like that. Yeah, obviously there's there's some standards that certain days of the week you might get a little more sales and things. But again, track it all down. Look for the patterns. Look for why certain days of the week you're busier than other days. I, I pointed this out to somebody not too long ago in my Patreon group. And the point was they, they started to track it. And sure enough... After, pay, after rent was paid, you know, on the 6th, they were getting a, a ton of sales, and it was because rent was paid. They, the, the people had their bills. It was the same time every single month. They had this $1,000 day, and then it was, then, you know, dropped down. It was slow for a few days. 
people don't hunt for stuff on Mondays and Tuesdays as much as they would on Saturday and Sunday. People are at work. You know, so there, there's all kinds of factors in why certain days are busier than other days. And it, it's routine. It happens all the time. If you, again, spreadsheet every day of the week for years on end, every year you're doing reselling, and you're going to see the pattern. You're going to see stuff that you wouldn't see any other way. You're going to see the wavy pattern that shows that, you know, the holiday was on this day one, one year, this day another. And you're going to see that they correlate with those. And you can figure out what's going on ahead of time and know when you should be busy. Know when it's going to be slow. Know that at that Labor Day it might be slow on Monday because everybody's out nobody's working the banks are closed and you know all that kind of stuff but i'm gonna let you go i know i've rambled rambled way too much today let me switch a few things on this end but again hopefully that was helpful if you did enjoy the conversation please slam that thumbs up button i only try to give you as honest and sincere of information as i can based on what i see do your own tests is what I would say if you've got enough quantity to do it. And you'll see similar results, similar similar um, findings as well. But anyway, I'll let you all go. I appreciate everybody coming on, and I hope you all have a good evening. <laughs>